infinite ammo. So, welcome to another IAS. I, I don't know if this is like a discussion or... Yeah, I guess it's a discussion. discussion. I'm going to call it a one-on-one, -on -one, but three people here. <clears throat> um, so yeah, we have a three-man discussion talking Ooh. about Resident Evil 2 Remake. Uh, just kind of discussing over the shoulder, talking about how people might take it a little too personal, how people might flip out, and just the general idea of something different that some, some people might not want, or some people definitely don't want in uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake. I am joined by Mr. Renegade Operative. Please feel free to introduce yourself. Hey people, how's it going? And people really, really are skeptical and paranoid about this style, so I kind of want to get into it. And uh, the other guest is Mr. Brandon, Mr. Brandle IAS. Yes, I wear a chicken chain necklace. Cause fuck all of you. I'm just kidding. Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm here to talk about Resident Evil, and yeah, no, it's already started. So yeah, uh, let's get into the first question. Why do you think the Resident Evil community has such a big gripe with Resident Evil 2 Remake, uh, with the possibility of it being an over-the-shoulder game like RE4, 5, 6, or C, and Revelations games? Just to Ooh, do it. I sucked this one off. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's because nostalgia is so strong with them that they didn't want to see it on um, this original image tarnish um, with this remake. Because let's look at Resident Evil 1. It still kept its original style and it add on top of what's already been established. People are feared that they're going, Capcom is going to take Resident Evil 2, change it up just for um, to please some modern babies, like someone else, some other people we, like, we know personally, you know, and, you know, and fear that it will jeopardize the game's quality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know, like... <sighs> Because we did this discussion on my channel, uh, I think it was last year, or almost two, yeah, it was last year, um, we talked about, uh, we, we, or maybe it was two years ago, but uh, we, we talked about uh, the fan base and how there's a, a huge divide between different styles. There's like a three-way divide now because of like uh, games like Seven coming out now. Uh and it just being like something where like nobody can agree on like having a, a set gameplay style. It, it just if it, if it's a set camera style, then all of a sudden the entire game is bad. And I don't necessarily think that's true. Um, part of the reason why I dislike Seven is not because of the camera angle, but because of the conflicting lore and and just how that game is as as a story and how it fits into the rest of the lore. Excuse me, but um, yeah, I think I think a lot of people overreact to the idea that there might be a different camera angle. I have to agree. Um, one of the things that people really need to understand is that until we see the game and judge it, we just have no idea how this over-the-shoulder camera angle could work. It could be for the better. I mean. I could talk shit about Resident Evil 6 until the fucking sun comes up, but the controls in that game are still good. The movement in that game is probably the best in the series, in my opinion. Uh, so it could be something that is beneficial to the game itself, and we don't know that yet. Yeah, can, can I just add really quick, too? Like, um, I actually do like RE6's movement, and I think it would work really well if Capcom, like, revived it in another like franchise or just a brand new IP. Mm -hmm. Like I think it would work really well in like a Dino Crisis game because I think a lot of people really like action uh in Dino Crisis as opposed to like the survival uh horror sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think one uh, way um they could do this is make the gameplay a little bit more faster. I mean uh, if the gameplay is really tense and the enemies are swarming at you, coming at you, if there's like a lot more danger, then I definitely think that a stylized camera probably could work because you're dealing with a lot on screen and that can make for some very scary moments. Uh, people believe that this can't be done right, but that does lead into the next question. So I can read that off if you want. Uh, yeah, like right after I 
kind of answer my my piece on this so, mm -hmm. I, I, even though i i talked about the uh, podcast that i did on my channel um as far as like why i personally think uh they might have a grape on this is uh personally i just think that it's refusal to adjust or learn um and i i see i see that a lot regardless of uh what someone may think or what someone might prefer you know somebody might prefer over the shoulder they they don't want to go back to classic uh style uh and vice versa some people who are like dead set on classic tank control re they just don't want to learn like over the shoulder and i think i think there's kind of a problem with that in in that community because mm -hmm. it's just with, with like refusal to learn so i think that's probably the the biggest thing and i definitely with that. agree with that i <laughs> definitely do agree with that because you know i felt like people just like you said don't take the time to learn the, um the style now um not, now i feel like people are also a little bit entitled because like this is my preferred style so i want it this way i don't care what capcom says you know that kind of thing but, yeah. but, but you know i think i think it's like cool to like you know disown a product just because it's a different angle that um you don't personally like yeah, it's yeah, I think, it's Capcom's I think, baby, so yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, we had talked about this too. Like, you know, uh, it, it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's fine to have an opinion, um, but that doesn't like having an opinion doesn't necessarily mean that a game is bad just because you, you want to say a game is bad. Mm -hmm. Like anyone, anyone can say a game is bad, but you know, if you really like break it down and really dissect it then you could see really good aspects or really bad aspects in the in any game really and uh, it's all you know it's all subjective another thing i want to say real quick is uh people need to understand that you know all these gripes it's understandable but times have changed if resident evil remake 2 changes you have to understand that it's not 1998 anymore there are things that's going to be changed and updated. Even if they stay to the same style, it's probably not even going to be a one for one shot of being like remake. They might put in completely new elements that might make that gameplay work, for example. So um, I, I think that what people should do is they should just sit back, see what happens and judge for yourself and play the game for yourself before saying that, you know, uh, this is trash because a lot of people like to do that. They like to see something uh, at first glance and pass it off. And I don't think that's giving it a fair shake. At least wait till a demo or something if you don't like it and try it out for yourself and see if they keep that same style. Um, yeah, we're yeah. number two now, right? Uh, we're yeah, about we're, to be. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and I and I definitely agree with and. You know, before you read off number two, Ren, mm -hmm. I definitely agree with what you had to say because, like, um, in the case of like RE7, like, I played what was it, the initial demo that they had, not the uh, patched version, but the initial demo. Uh, and then I played two other demos when invited to Capcom, and I still didn't like it. You mm -hmm. know, um, I just didn't feel like, from a gameplay perspective, it, it, it just didn't feel like a good game from a, and, and not like as good game as in, like, oh, it's unplayable. I mean, more like, it didn't feel like a good Resident Evil title, in my personal opinion, right? Um, but as a game on its own, right, like, it functions, you know? I, I, I can understand where some people might like it, but I think, yeah, a demo, a demo, or at least seeing, like, some form of, of gameplay or, you know, really following up, like, what, what the developers are saying and stuff like that, and I guess not being, like, hostile about it either is just... If, like if you're just civil about it and say like hey i don't i don't want to play this this remake i, I just not for me i'm just gonna vote with my wallet i think that's pretty fair to say in my opinion if if they ruin this i mean dmc5 might happen so there's other games to play it's not the oh, end no, absolutely it's not the yeah. end of the world definitely especially since that game got leaked now so yeah we got other things to worry about. We got Mega Man X coming. We got, well, Street Fighter still a thing. Marvel? Ha, huh, well, I'm kidding. Yeah, I mean, we got other own um, Marvel. <laughs> we got other games that we're in play, so not in the world, though. Yeah. But it will suck to see Resident Evil 2 remake not to live up to the standards as the original um, Resident Evil 1 remake did. Mm -hmm. Or his original game, of course, you know. But time will tell. Yeah. 
Anyway, uh, let's get on to number two. We've been on number one for quite a while. Yes, Don. All right, so do you think that a survival horror game can be promptly done with over the shoulder? Uh, yes, Dead Space 1, it is fantastic. What makes it great is the fact that there's so much build up to what's going on with the creatures and Ishimura and everything else going on around it. I mean, there's a nice psychological horror aspect to it, which I really enjoy. So I think it can be done in the right circumstances. Dead Space 2 did take things to be a bit more action heavy. I think what people need to understand is that, yes, it really can be done under the right circumstance. They just need to take it and refine it. And of course, like, Dead Space 1 was supposed to be the blueprint for, I think they took ideas from Resident Evil 4, if I'm not too mistaken. Yeah, if, if I recall right, they uh, they said, like, they wanted to take Resident Evil 4 and not only do it better, but throw it into space. Mm -hmm. So that's the concept right there. I mean, it's RE4 in space, but it's a bit more scarier. So they managed to pull that off like no problem i'm not sure how long it took to make that game but still uh when it came out a lot of people really really wanted death space to be super successful and then ea kind of fucked it with the third game mm -hmm. uh, yeah. i don't know um you know unpopular opinion here though but i don't think resident evil 4 is even scary i don't consider that a horror game personally oh i i definitely agree there um yeah, I, I absolutely agree that like just them taking it and fine-tuning it to make Dead Space 1 was something that, you know, it, it shows that the over the shoulder with survival horror, it can be done. Even if you pick up shit like off the ground, you don't really get a lot of ammo on the higher difficulties either. So I spent like half of my moments like trying to punch out baby children because I had no ammo. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, in, in my opinion, in regards to this question um i i think it can be done uh i think a good example is uh both the evil within games i think evil within 2 does it a little bit better just because they put you in more situations where uh your ammo is far more scarce by comparison uh but you know I, i've played both of them pretty extensively and uh ev the evil within one i definitely like when i first played it i had some pretty tense moments and uh some pretty like heart pounding moments where like i thought i was gonna just instantly die if i didn't do something right uh or i couldn't survive because of the amount of ammo or health items that i had mm -hmm. so um so i definitely think it could be done um hell even in the case of like resident evil uh revel the revelation series uh i think a lot of people disregard that series i think people just kind of forget that it even exists because they're it, while while that series is not perfect, um, there are things that could work really well, and it's a good compromise for people who prefer that gameplay style with people who prefer that sort of like a genre of game where you know you can have an action style like action playing game, your person action game, uh, but it plays like a survival horror. I, I think that a you know a good compromise like that can work if done right. Uh, yeah, uh, just because it's like, you know, third person doesn't make you make a bad horror game. Like Ren pointed out, Dead Space, Dead Space 2, you know, those are good. Uh, um, Evil Within 1 and 2, you know, psychological horror games, those worked well for um, this camera angle. And then if, if you go past that, though, you can look at first person, like, uh, you know, um, Outlast, Outlast 1 and Lesser Ascent 2, you know, and then you have your glorified images, you know, those games worked for us at camera angles. So it's not impossible for it to be done. And Resident Evil has done it before too, like the Revelations games, you know, third person. You know, those games are, for the most part, psychological horror, more action based, though, but it had those elements in it. I don't so, know uh, if this is a later question, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I, I, think, I think the issue with like camera angles is more so like, uh, at what point do, do one or, or does one style kind of overpopulate and just get overdone too much to the point where it just has kind of run its course. Very yet though, what style dictates what makes a good horror game and what doesn't. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, in my opinion, it 
every horror game that I play with a different camera style, whether it's fixed camera, um, first person or third person, they all manage to do it relatively well with certain games. Now, there are certain games that take the trope and run with it when it comes to either putting in things that don't make sense, like more ammo, um, making the game not scary, putting in too many quick time events like Resident Evil 6. When they do that, that makes the game worse in different standards because they're adding so much to it that doesn't make sense. Indeed. Yep. So that's the problem. Like the problem really is, are you really making a survival horror game and does it fit in those connotations? Because doing stuff like that, oversaturating the game with like too many weapons where you can one shot every boss, that's where it gets kind of stupid. <coughs> Resident Evil 4. <laughs> oh yes. When you get that hand cannon, that's it. You, you basically like won the game. Yeah, that's what I was Infinite Launcher. Oh yeah, that's I forgot the Infinite Rocket Launcher. Jesus, go ahead, Brendan. Yeah, Resident. Uh, yeah, all of them kind of like that. Once you get beat the game under a certain condition, you get an infinite um weapon. Then you know, at that point, man, what is horror? <laughs> Just go and shoot everything. You'd be fine. Yeah. All right, we're good here on number two. Should we move on to number three? Uh, I think uh, yeah, we're good. Think yeah, so. we're good. So That's read that it. off, Brendan. Sure thing. Um, do you believe there is some truth to the statement um, the fandom has about Capcom turning a remake into an action shooter like Resident Evil 4? The opinion that creates panic among the fan base with um our <laughs> sorry Resident Evil 2 remake. Mm. Uh, honestly, I want to say no, but I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, because, you know, again, the style they've been using for years since 4 has been successful. Like, there's no denying it. Regardless of your preference, though, 4, 5, 6 were more successful than 1, 2, and 3 with this type of, um, style of gameplay. Now, let's not catch up there. Same thing with Revelations, you know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, I wouldn't put them past them to turn it, um, into, like, you know, at least from the perspective of Resident Evil 4, 5, etc., etc. But if they go a little too hard on the action, let's be real, Resident Evil 2 still has a bit of his action. And then, yeah, I think um, it will lose his identity and people have their right to be mad. And to answer the question, yes, there might be some truth to it if they actually um, make the game a little bit more action-based. There are some people, real quick, Dom, I just want to say something. They say that Resident Evil 2 has a lot more action than the first one when it comes to either creature density or having all these weapons leon has like a bunch of shit that you can get that is kind of ridiculous um oh, i agree because you get the magnum you can get the smg you can get it for claire as well though but you also get a buffed up shotgun if you find the right parts yeah you get a and, lot of uh, cool shit yeah so i agree it is more action based in resident evil one that's for I, certain i think that part of the reason is like uh, you have to remember too like hideki kamiya worked on the original resident evil 2 mm-hmm so, you know, and, and he's somebody that does not really care for the horror genre. He likes action games. That's part of the reason why he's worked on so many, you know, action games over the, over the years. Um, I think that when it comes down to it, it's just, it, it's kind of to be expected that that game is like that, given who worked on it. Yeah, so I, I don't, I really don't get this opinion that people believe that Resident Evil 2 didn't have a lot of, you know, sections where you're encountering like something because there's always something in that game that happens. Either you're fighting Mr. X or you're fighting Lickers or you're fighting the plant monsters. Um, they have a lot more segments where you fight certain enemies as opposed to the original where it's like a little bit more spaced out. Uh, will they turn it into RE4? I don't know. I can't say it's not it's too early to say if the game will play exactly like that because we don't have any gameplay. Uh, But I will say I will be kind of disappointed if it's an action shooter, because um, I I think that, like I said, all the quick time events that got on my nerves and RE6 um, getting my head shoved in a meat grinder by a giant fucking 
sausage monster that uh killed me in that game that's not fun uh so i i think what they need to do is find the right balance and try to make it where this stylized third person shooter is actually a border between a real survival horror game and something that's actually modernized yeah i agree and and as far as like um the question is concerned like like i i think like i said it, there is some partial truth to it i think that to an extent uh it would be true uh, i think that like they might have some action set pieces where you might have to you know fight your way to the to the police station or fight your way to the underground labs and stuff like that or fight your way through the sewers mm -hmm. um i i can i can picture that um but i can kind of picture that more in the sense like it it's like revelations one because if revelations one has a lot of segments like that even though it's uh it's a mix of horror and action um you know there are segments where you have to actually stand your ground and and fight or push your way to the next objective and, and make it without getting ripped to shreds. So I, I can see it, uh, and, and I think there would be some partial truth to it. Um, now, as far as like Capcom actually going out of their way and doing that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a wait and see affair, I think. I think the biggest thing is like we actually have to physically see this game. Because for all we know, like, uh, and and I, I said this, like, two years ago at this point, like, we don't know what this game is going to be like. We don't even know what, like, something like Devil May Cry 5 is going to be like. These games, you know, they could be announced, and, you know, they could be the hypest fucking things we've ever seen. And there's no gameplay. Be... Right, right. And, and or, or it could be the most shittiest thing we, we ever see. We don't know until we see something. So, it's, and until we get an official confirmation of course for Capcom themselves so yeah because uh i believe that you know they could simply just show us a cgi trailer and be done and we would be left with more news and more speculation and all that shit until we actually see more gameplay so no one knows um and also they need to change some stuff in this game because i believe that that alligator boss he was way too easy in the original, so make him a little bit more harder. Do stuff like that. I think in the first remake, Plant 42 was completely changed up. It, yes, and and I believe they added they an extra level, so uh, you go up and shoot it directly, or go to the bottom, so more terrain for you to move around and um, deal with Plant 42. Yeah, if I mean in the original, if you knew what to do, you could just run in there shoot him a couple of times he'll die like real fast i like how there, you can think a little uh, bit more with the different levels i don't mean to cut you off either but like um mm -hmm. neptune in the remake as well was changed that oh yeah because in the original it was a square room and, and then they changed it to a more circular room and there's more like puzzles in that fight so you the shark is just not super easy and you can either ignore him or blow him away so uh some stuff does need to be altered for better or for worse yeah like because i remember people were freaking out about a possible you know not confirmed but a possible rumor that they completely removed that fight um realistically speaking i, I could kind of understand why they would want to because it's not like it's not a genuine boss fight it's more like a pace breaker if anything mm -hmm. um I mean, if they wanted to remove it or just completely alter it where the entire room is different, kind of like the Neptune room in, uh, in the remake, and just make something that's genuinely challenging to the player, I could definitely see that working a lot better than just keeping it uh, the same. Yeah, because you open a container, then he eats it, you shoot him, he's dead. Uh, it needs to be a little bit more better than that, in my opinion. Yeah, because um, with um, actually Neptune, um, they changed it into like a puzzle boss. If you fail it, you're dead. Yep. It wasn't like an original puzzle, I'm concerned. Correct me if I'm wrong, of course. You're, you're actually uh, right because uh, he just chases you around and you can outrun him. Yeah, that's in the boring. original, you, had to, you, you just had to press a button in a different room to drain the water, and that was it. That's all you had to do. And after that, you could just shoot all the sharks that are, you know, flopping around on the ground. 
So it, it's uh, it's not that much different. Mm -hmm. But I uh, I think but they you know like they added more. But go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna I was gonna elaborate on that uh, because they made the last part a little bit more dynamic with the fuse box. Mm. But once you know what to do, it's pretty easy. Yeah. All right. So can we move on to number four? Yes, yeah, I can read this one. Uh, right. Do you believe everyone would be satisfied with tank controls on fixed camera angles? Uh, oh, no. I can oh. say this right now. No. And no. and uh, the reason being is because the fan base is so divided. Uh, and it, here's the thing, like, I as of I would say as of recent, I kind of blame the fan base themselves. I, I blame Capcom to a degree, and I also blame the fan base themselves because they can't they can't handle differing opinions. And I know I'm going to trigger somebody when I say this and when they end up watching this, that I don't think that they can handle differing opinions very well, at least. Um, some people can. Some people can, but not all of them. Some of them lose their shit if you just say the simplest thing, like you don't like a specific game. And it, it, you don't even have to delve into why. You could just be as you know, as simplistic as possible and just say, I just didn't like this game. Don't, you know, Don, come on. I, I mean, it's Shinji Mikami. He's <laughs> the best director ever. Clearly, he clearly he can't do anything wrong, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's just stuff like that. Uh, I think, I think if they added the option, same thing, like if they added the option for first person, as like an optional thing for people to do. It doesn't necessarily have to be there at launch, just something like they patch in, uh, kind of like the Wolf N2 with the first person mode. Um, if they just patch that stuff in or just add it as an unlock, I think people would be a lot more forgiving or just it would be a lot more favorable because then everybody kind of gets what they want. Uh, as far as the tank controls go, I mean... I don't know. Uh, I think people are kind of split. I don't have a personal issue with them, but I, I remember people not caring for them. Uh, people that I've talked to, at least in, in the group. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, too, they, they also did the, the new control scheme in the HD remasters for Zero and Remake, which um, I heard people like, but if I recall correctly, the animations, the movement animations just don't look all that right with that control scheme. Now that was not the issue, as I remember. It's the issue that um, if you go towards the angle and it switches over, if you keep pressing the direction, it will like no, it won't adjust with the camera angle. So even though if you hit tilting forward, and you mm -hmm. change the angle that aims like leftwards, you'll be going like a different direction, opposed to going forward. Whereas the tank controls, just hold the button and you keep going straight line. So that, that um kind of perspective, you know. So that was the uh, issue with the um, Zero and Remake um, Remaster. So that's something mm -hmm. they got fixed in the um, Remake. If Remake 2, if they are gonna um, introduce like over the shoulder with 10 controls or you know, free controls. Yeah. I, I will say though, uh, before I end off, um, if they were to do fixed camera angles, they could, a lot of people I think assume that they mean like Resident Evil 1 or Resident Evil 2 style fixed camera angles where like, it's just static cameras, mm -hmm. um, but I think I think people really need to look at something like Onimusha Three or Code Veronica X uh, to get an idea of like how how they could do a fixed camera angle game with or uh, like Devil May Cry games. Effects. Yeah, or even the Devil May Cry games, like you know, just having a fixed camera angle that actually uh, moves with the uh, with the character. Yeah. Uh, also, Silent Hill. I mean. There are moments where the camera can be wonky, but at the same time, it's mostly behind the player in the first game. So you can see like everything in front of you. So imagine like a camera that tracks everything that's behind the player and you can see uh, what's in front of you as opposed to saying, you know, I'm going to switch the camera when I turn a corner and in a split second, I'm dead because there's an enemy there that I didn't see. Uh, People don't understand that Resident Evil having fixed cameras like that, initially the director admitted it, it was a gimmick. Um, it wasn't anything that was, you know, super revolutionary. He admitted that he did that just to make sure that the game was a bit more scary. 
as opposed to it being the other way around. Mm. And these days, I, I don't think that's going to fly, uh, but I think, like I said before, more intensity would help out in the long run because who wouldn't be scared of fucking three crimson heads coming at you? That will make me shit my pants. I, I will say, um, the only thing, because, I mean, I'm not against the idea of having fixed camera angles come back. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think as far as like variety is concerned in, in survival horror genre or just the horror genre in general, uh, I I do think that we need to have games with the camera angle perspective because I don't I'm I don't know about any, either of you two, but like I I'm just kind of personally tired of seeing every horror game be either first person or over the shoulder. And I'm not necessarily saying that those are bad games. Mostly first person, but, you know, uh, it's just stuff that, like, we just see constantly over and over and over and over and over again, especially from, like, indie devs. Yeah, I'm not a fan Uh, of the first person creepypasta stuff, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so it's not saying that, you know, you can't get a good game out of it, but we've seen it so much, it's like, we can we can use some variety. I mean, there have been point and click horror games in the genre, you know. So like, that should that should tell you something. Like we, we could we could definitely use some variety. And and fixed camera angles are not as dated as something like point and click, by comparison at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will say uh, I'm gonna play a bit of uh, devil's advocate. I will say that third person horror games, they have not been very plentiful. After Death Space died, I think a lot of developers stopped doing it. Um, they did the whole action horror thing with Resident Evil, but eventually they moved on to a new camera angle. And um, after that, it's only been like third person shooters. That's about it. Um, not a lot centered around survival horror. Yeah. Although, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the in the case of like Resident Evil with seven, uh, they actually did lose numbers, uh, especially in Japan. Isn't I I I saw the platinum list for Capcom. Uh, RE seven did not sell the greatest from what I saw. I think it's like under five and six. It might yeah, be under more like, games as well. It's under five and six, but when it, when the uh, because the remasters for 4, 5, and 6 came out the same year mm-hmm. as Vanilla RE7. Um, those remasters did better in Japan than they did, uh, than RE7 did. More people bought the remasters, and I, I, I don't know if that's especially true for something for like the uh, American audience. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if that did end up being to some degree true. Same here. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, RE7, they did say, oh, we're going to have more Western influence. So that's one red flag that might attribute to something like that. Yeah, I mean, I remember talking to a couple, uh, a few uh, Japanese people about it, and I think some of them uh, even said, like, it's as simple as just, you know, there's no zombies, <laughs> you know, in, in Resident Evil. It, it's just not a Resident Evil game, <laughs> like, to, to them. Um, but I, I mean, you know, the Japanese player base is very different in, in their taste too. So, and they might be a lot more civil by comparison to the Western audience when it comes to uh, their opinions. Oh yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> look at how uh, <laughs> stuff like the Xbox is doing in Japan. Uh, they like certain things that cater to them, and a lot of American stuff is not one of them. Yeah. So we can move on to the next one. Da, 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 da. I, don't, I don't know if Brandon wanted to say anything about number four or not. Mr. Number four, I, was, I, was, I think I already said what I need to say um, after you say something dumb, but, you know. Oh, okay. You uh, want to read off number five then? Sure, why not? Uh, okay, what is the best way Capcom can appease um, the fan base when it comes to um, uh, correlate, um, the correlation, correlate to gifts, sorry, I can read. Correlate to giving everybody on um, what they want with Resident Evil 2 remake camera options. Uh, honestly, just give us the options. Simple. Give us um fix or give us third person. You know that's the best way to do it. Just simply balance the game with both in mind, and then you wouldn't have a problem. 
yeah, I played uh, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, and you could change cameras on the fly. Like, you can change from normal to panoramic. Uh, so, if it's very easy... Also, Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence, uh, you can change from the original camera to the uh, camera that shows behind Snake's back. Uh, which is substantially better in my opinion. So if people can do that in games like those, why can't they do it for RE2 Remake? I think that might be the best way to appease people. I mean, it wouldn't bother me at that point. If I want like third person, I could just press a button. If I want fixed camera, I could push a button. Can I say um, in regards to that, because I, I, I did talk about that a little bit earlier. Hmm. Um, even though I think like, you know, if Capcom just has it as an unlock or just patches it in later, um, I think in the likely case scenario is that they would probably have uh, over the shoulder, right? Um, but then they would, because it's likely that they're going to develop the game on the RE engine. Yeah. So they're probably going to have a first person mode, whether that's just, you know, playing it how RE7 plays or just have it where you need to have PSVR, otherwise you can't play it that way. Um, that's kind of the way that I see, or I would suspect it going. Um, you know, just realistically speaking, because I think there's a lot of things that Capcom could do, but Capcom does like to cut a lot of corners when, yeah. it, when it comes to development. And it's unfortunate, but when they do actually put an effort, like with stuff like Monster Hunter World, it's like, oh my god, why can't you do this all the fucking time? <laughs> you know, so... But uh, I think, I think realistically speaking, they probably wouldn't put in the extra effort to have all three styles. Um, I think it would just be one or the other and then the extra first-person option just because of the engine that they're working with. Yeah, it's not uncommon. Even in games like Code Veronica, they had battle mode where you could play in first-person, so... Um... I wouldn't mind it, but in my opinion, when it comes to first person, that's the least ideal because it's like, eh, uh, I would, it's like how I felt when first person came out for Evil Within. It's a nice touch, but I kind of don't want to play it in first person as much as I do third person. So that's how I feel about it. Oh yeah. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I believe me. I would much rather play like RE2 Remake in like the classic style or just over the shoulder um but you know like thinking about how capcom would go about it i think that that's how they would probably do it oh, of course i mean the true way to appease everybody is to have all three i don't think they would do all three because it's capcom they do get lazy sometimes but if they have like either the best two out of three or maybe all of them then i won't mind just give us something that would have people bitch less yeah although i i don't know why but i kind of i kind of suspect the feeling they would try to like charge you for it oh <laughs> like, my god okay that would be pre, a horrible decision pre-order pre dlc and then after it's pre-ordered dlc it's 5.99 dlc package oh that'd be fucking <laughs> terrible don't take that idea capcom yeah, please don't <laughs> turn off the podcast now, damn it. Yeah. Just, uh, just, just, I mean, like, if it's not in the game initially, just patch it in. Like, I think, you know, I think people would be willing enough to wait for it if you just patch it in. Oh, yeah, I agree. So we finished with this one. We can move on to the next. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we can move on. All right, I can you read that. Unless Brandon has something to say. I don't think no, no, so. I'll say we can move on. Okay, so how do you feel about people giving the opinion that... Hold on, let me read this again. How do you feel about people giving the opinion of pretending this remake doesn't exist if they won't go fix camera? Um, I can go real quick. I think it's fucking ridiculous because, I mean, at that point, you're just boycotting a game because of a camera angle. It's like, come on, people. It's it's 2018. Like I said, if they modernize the game, I would be totally fine with that. If they make it like the classic style, I would be totally fine. Because in my opinion, I don't think tank controls for me is too hard to learn. At the same time, I would not mind them doing something different. Because, again, 
they're making this game from the ground up. It's a remake. They're going to have elements of the original, but sometimes remakes are not exactly like the original. They might change some stuff. I remember Resident Evil Remake 1. It's a bit longer because they added new content that worked. I would love for them to do something like that for this remake. But at the same time, if they change the camera to be over the shoulder, I would be completely fine with it because, again, some things need to change. Yeah, I agree. Um, as far as like that's concerned, I mean, my stance on it is like, I mean, if you don't like it, that's fine. You know, not everyone's going to like something. Um, I think it's fine to say that you're not going to buy something because you simply don't like it. Um, but I think some people will, I think some people will just take it a little too far. They, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of like picturing this in my head and I think some people will go out of their way to constantly make content talking about why they don't like it and, you know, why they think other people should not buy it because they don't like it. Um, all, so I, I can I can see that, but you were saying real quick. All I'm gonna say is those people that do that, you're probably going to hold the biggest L on earth if you boycott this game so hard on your channel. But after the game comes out, you fucking buy it. That's just I mean, at that point, you might as well say you're a hypocrite if you do that, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, like I, you know, uh, I don't mean to constantly bring it back to me, but like. um Still haven't bought RE7, and I have pretty much stood by that decision since it was unveiled at E3. Mm. So it, it's just something that I refuse to buy because I just don't want to give Capcom my money on that. Yeah, I like just people have asked me, would I play it? Like, I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, I will like, play it, right? But I'm not interested. Yeah. So until like the price goes down a lot more for Gold Edition. I'm just not interested in buying Resident Evil 7 right now. Yeah. Which, I mean, like I said, and, and going back to that, that uh, the subject of the question, I mean, I think it's fine to say you're not going to buy a game if you simply don't like it. You know, it just, um, it's just one of those things where it's like, how far are you going to take that, though? You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I could understand if you wanted to make the, like, make a video talking about what the developers might have said and maybe why you dislike what they said. Because I've done that. Uh, maybe talking about the, the fan base and how they're reacting or, or things like that. But going out of your way to constantly talk, constantly talking about every little bit of like news and information and saying, like, this is why this game sucks and, like, you shouldn't buy it because this is how I feel. I'm like, no, that, that just, that makes you look like an ass. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like... I think, I think realistically speaking, like you could just leave your opinion and be simple about it. And oh, simple and simple about it. And also, I expect two things at E3. I don't expect we're going to get everything on Resident Evil 2 Remake because, in my opinion, Capcom, even when it came to Dead Rising 4 being first revealed, they did not show a lot before it leaked. I don't expect we'll get everything. And I also would say some trailers can be a bit misleading. So maybe there is some stuff that will not be complete or will be an alpha. You never know. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. You guys done? Yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, though, if you're going to go pick the game up just because it's not particular, um, camera preference then you need to go seek, seek some help real talk because that's um very petty to not pick something up just because that's, that's like picking up uh let's say uh let's say it's picking up uh call of duty for example um you're not gonna buy it because it doesn't have like the aa12 that's like very minor compared to everything else in the game like if you didn't like the game because it had no story mode it didn't have um this or that you, you need to get your priorities straight because of your games because not picking it up because of that um that one little minor issue. Yeah, I, I'm questioning if you're actually a Resident Evil fan or not. I'm I'm just saying. Just to kind of interject here, like I think I think it like varies. It's like if it, if it's just like that's all they're talking about, as opposed to just being simple about it, mm -hmm. or just like you know, oh, I, I just not my kind of game. 
you know, like, and they just leave it at that. Uh, as opposed to being like, well, I'm not going to pick it up because it, it's first person and everything that's first person, like, sucks. Like, I think that's kind of ridiculous because, like, you know, at least when, when it came to me, uh, I, I would say, like, hey, I don't like Resident Evil 7, and I would point out what the developers would say, how, how they were talking about the game, things that they were doing with the game, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, plus my experiences with, uh, with the game. Um, so I think, I think if they were to do something like that, where they at least, uh, you know, pointed out things like, hey, you know, they're, they're cutting content that was, like, standard in the original and making it, like, you know, fifteen dollar DLC, or they're they're you know they're making the game with even like you know uh, less less of the enemies that we we've seen in the game, or less bosses and and just less overall content, and the quality of the game itself is just not looking up to par with what you would expect with a a good remake. Then then I could understand. So I think I think it varies, but being as simple as just saying one thing is is what swaying you is kind of an issue right all right which i which i think that's what you were saying right just just to clarify uh yeah for the most part no if it's minor don't bitch about it not a big deal if it's major you know bullshit then yeah talk about it yeah <laughs> yeah Sum it up. i mean fuck i remember when capcom said the x-men weren't relevant I talked about it. <laughs> I was like, you gotta be fucking crazy. Logan just came out. It's a success. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember when, when since we're on the subject, uh, I remember when Masachika Kawada was saying, uh, you know, like completely disregarding horror games like Silent Hill 2, you know? Uh, and talking about how, like, first person is, like, the only way you can go with with making a good horror game, which is, like, absolutely, you know, asinine, but that happened <laughs> like and then you also had like developers saying like oh this is the hardest game in the series and contradicting what masachika would say so um yeah just to sum it up i mean you can call you can call out bullshit but if it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things then who cares uh just don't buy the game and don't look like a hypocrite when it comes to the game coming out hmm. Uh, so, so I guess Mr. Brando can read the last one. Actually, uh, he, he didn't he just read the last one? <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, yeah. No. okay. Yeah, uh, so it's my turn. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, many modern reviewers gave Resident Evil games lower scores based on the way they're controlled. Uh, it certainly happened with the Wii ports and remasters. Do you think that Resident Evil 2 Remake should be modernized, uh, not taking away elements from the original, but controlling with a better or new perspective and do you think it should be an exact clone of resident evil one remake mm. uh, and i think that last bit just kind of means like adding in more stuff and, and new mechanics and just uh beefing up the original game yes new stuff so, i'll let you go run uh <laughs> i'm gonna make it quick i think it should be a combination of both i at the end of the day i, I don't want to like play a game with like subpar controls or shooting shit i can't see i i do want them to do something kind of unique like i said um i said this before maybe have it where you can switch on the fly to what camera you prefer and go from there so i think that's what they should do they definitely should use remake one as the blueprint because resident evil remake one was fantastic in every way they took the original game they beefed it up they added a lot and they also made it significantly better in my opinion than some of the elements in the original so if they could do something like that that's cool at the same time i do want them to also make sure the game plays and feels well and looks well hmm. so Where anyone else go? uh well I would say this review is a bunch of morons because they clearly are just. I'm sorry. Yeah, those guys are um are just um obviously just they're like the baby boomers of video games. They cannot go back to anything that's um past the PS2 era. You know, um seeing this uh, tiny tiny pixel on the PS1 will probably trigger them. That's how bad it is. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a funny joke, but it has happened. Someone complained about. 
a character's I know it's off topic, but someone complained about a character's hands being stuck together in GTA 3. And I'm like, it's the PS2 fam. The graphics aren't going to look super photorealistic. What are you expecting? Yeah. That, that's some shit right there. <laughs> so I, I, I can't I can't get down with people who think like that because there are some really good titles, some really good games that came out not in this generation. Yeah, some really great classics. They're called classics for a reason. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> like, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I mean, you could look back at like PlayStation 1 games where they had like mitten hands, you know, like <laughs> just a thumb and a, and a, and a glove. You know, you can't forget Resident Evil's bad voice acting where Barry says Jill's going to be a sandwich. I mean, come on, that shit's classic. How how about uh, wait, don't go over there. <laughs> uh, Chris is sleeping. No, Wesker is sleeping with the ultimate failure. Yeah. <laughs> Which sounds very, very suspect and gay, but you know, I'm not gonna judge. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him. I mean, have you seen uh, '90s Wesker compared to uh, remake Wesker? I don't know. People might want that tyrant dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, anyway, um, I guess I should kind of wrap things up. Unless if you two have anything else to say. Nah, I'm good. Uh, and and. I guess I'm fine, you know. But like I said, a bunch of um gamer bamer baby boomers. So I'm like, you guys need to actually appreciate the classics before you talk trash about the new one. Because uh, coincidentally, though, this is the same problem I have with God of War, actually. Of course, different subject, different game, I know, though. But same problem I have with um the media um downplaying the originals like it's a bad thing compared to what it um, show in this one. Uh, but again, I, I want to get into that because that's, that, that would be a long story. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm generally not one to take reviewers seriously because they seem to like to complain about really anything, and they like to cause controversies. Hello, BMC Devil May Cry. Um, but you know, as far as like how the game itself should be, uh, I mean, we did a discussion on the on the remake, uh, way 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 before we started hearing like more rumors and stuff like that. Uh, ideally for me. I just, I would really be okay with it if it was like Revelations 1 and 2, where it played like those games where it had some action but still had survival horror elements. Because to me, that would be the best compromise. It's not the ideal remake, but it would be the best compromise. And then as far as like additions, I just want them to, you know, add new rooms, expand on, on you know, the areas, add new enemy types, and uh, maybe just possibly even like slightly altered the, the map layout too so that way you were like really thrown off with what you know based on the original so uh but i don't i don't you know like like i said for, for the most part i would just want it to play like a revelations title uh just as a good compromise even though that's not the ideal remake uh, uh revelation is probably the more ideal way for me to play the game because it has the smoothest um control scheme it, everything is accessible and everything you need is right there you don't need to press some retarded command to dodge something everything yeah, is there I, I for think, you i mean you you know what I, what i mean though by ideal in this case where it's like it's exactly like the original it plays like the original it ideally like the original it's the direction yeah. you want to go yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So in that case, like, yeah, I mean, granted, I would I die for a remake like that? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm I'm here in the real world, and I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. And I think, realistically speaking, that would be the best compromise. But I, I mean, what do you two think about that? As far as like a compromised remake, as some would call it. Hmm. Make it play like uh maybe Resident Evil three point five, maybe? Uh that was cool. See, there was a rumor that it was supposed to be the uh, it was OTS but stylized, so it could be something like that too. Yeah, where it's you like never know. it's fixed camera, but when you aim you go third person, so I mean that could work. Yeah, uh, and if anybody has not seen 3.5, you could just look up videos for that. Or you could look at uh, Cold Fear as a good example of how that plays. Mm -hmm. 
So I think I set my piece, so I'm good. Yeah, I've, I've set my piece too, so uh, should we do outros then? Yup. Alrighty, uh, you all can find me as Biodevil Dom on pretty much everything now. Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, although I don't really go on Twitch that much. I should. Uh, but yeah, Twitter and YouTube for the most part. I just did a video on a particular content creator regarding Resident Evil, so uh, uh, that's something. And uh, yeah, I'll be doing a Rainbow Six Siege video soon, so uh, look forward to that. Anyway, uh, Ren, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at RenOperative underscore. You can find me on YouTube at RenegadeOperative. Uh, I recently did a few videos on said particular content creator. I also made a video on the Kung Fu genre for video games. So if you want to check that out, then you are more than welcome to do so. Also, I will link the original Resident Evil 2 remake podcast we had in the description below so you can check that out as well it's a bit more fleshed out than this but i think this was a great discussion so far mm. and brandon where can we find you he's dead you can find me and oh. now you damn this <laughs> <laughs> uh you can find me on twitter at mr brando ies and you can find me on youtube now as the immortal brandon also, uh, um, shout out to Devil Hunter James for making my new banner. You know, just got it recently. So there you go. Yeah. All, right, All right. So, so I think that's it, right? Yep, that's it for now. Um, we will be covering E3 in like I say a week. I will also two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Okay. Okay. Two so weeks. yeah, we're, we're we're a little bit ahead here. <laughs> All right. So um. I definitely will. Well, it's in like seven, it's in seven and a half. No, wait, it's nine days away. Shit. Not well, close enough. That's yeah, close. Yeah, so uh, if we see stuff there, we will be reacting. I will also put the Infinite Ammo Syndicate Twitch in the description below. So uh, be sure to be there. I will be putting time cars up hopefully pretty soon. So no one will be left in the dust when we go live. Um, I think that's it for now. Until then, take care, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, well, one more thing, though. Um, fixed camera angles, just to quote my best friend, Kamalfing, they're functions. <laughs> functions. <laughs> they're functions. <laughs>